Hi, I'm Bernadette Casey from the Paul Maria Textile Research and Development Company. We love fashion, but sometimes it's confusing and difficult to navigate if you're interested mm. in ethical and sustainable clothing. So we decided to come out and speak to our friends in fashion and sustainability and see what they think and how they navigate it and get inside some people's closets. And today we're in Laurie Foon's closet. <laughs> we're actually in the future. <laughs> So Laurie has been a leader in sustainable fashion. You started Starfish nearly 25 years ago? 1993. Mm. Oh, what is that, 23? Mm, 25 years ago. Oh, that's coming terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. That's, oh, no, <laughs> coming up. Yeah, coming up 25 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that was a real leader in New Zealand fashion. Mm, it was at the time. And um, when I came back from my OE, I knew that I wanted to start a business, but the body shop model, Anita Roddick, had had a major impact on what what was inspiring to me. So in a way, we were modelling our business, even from the get-go, on, on the body shop model. Right. Mm. Oh, interesting. Mm. Um, and from there, you've evolved. You're now the face of um, Sustainable Business Network. In Wellington, yes. Yeah. Yes, I've been the... Uh, manager for three years on now and I can say it's a really exciting place to be at the coalface of seeing what businesses are doing to to make have a major positive impact on our you know on their businesses but on the people in the planet as well yeah and you're taking that another step mm. into, <laughs> into local politics and what what was the catalyst for that well, I have put my hand up. The uh, seat for councillor has become free here in the southern ward where, where we live. And it felt like the right time for me. But yes, I did wake up in 2017 saying I wanted to have more impact. And what I see in Wellington is there are so many great things ha happening. And I guess what I want to do is, is help make more good things happen or help those that are making good things happen to really... Uh, yeah, get some traction on, on those things. Brilliant. Mm. I'm so disappointed. I'm not in the war. <laughs> I can't vote for you. It's all right. <laughs> so, from politics to fashion. Mm. Um, one, what are you wearing? Um, today, it's it's a merry mix-up, but I this is an old starfish blouse. It's uh, made out of silk and was printed by a local textile designer, Greta Menzies, who's one of my favourites. Um, I have a leather skirt on from Empire of Genius, which I bought secondhand at Ziggurat. Um, that has this has been an amazing, almost like a uniform for me because I ride my bike, so it's actually really practical. It's like a little. Oh, is that why you favour the A yeah, A nine skirt? Oh, yeah, that's okay, it because yeah. I can get yeah. So pretty much now, if I can't wear it on the bike, it's out. I'm not interested. Yeah. And then my lo lovely docs were a friend's, and she wanted to give them to my daughter and I said I doubt it <laughs> but she did make me pay for them thanks Mary <laughs> but yeah very good I'm looking over your shoulder into your wardrobe mm. and the amazing colours you've thank, got a thank very you. pretty wardrobe I, create, I uh, put some styling uh, put some colour ordering and especially for you but actually I must say it's more by category and then I range it from light to dark so, um, shirts, light to dark, dresses, light to dark, skirts and trousers, light to dark. Right. Mm, that really helps my sanity. I, I love having the wardrobe in order so that I can get in really easily and, and choose because actually I don't have a lot of time, so speed is a major thing for me. Right, yeah. I do like you. Like you, I have dresses, skirts, shirts, etc, etc. Mm. But I don't do the colour thing. Oh, um, the colour yeah. the colour thing's fun. So sometimes for me on a Sunday or a Saturday night, I will have a glass of wine and come into my wardrobe and order it. Oh, that's, do you? That's a happy place. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Yeah. So in your wardrobe, that. what's what's one of your favourite pieces at the moment? Um, well, something and and for me, my drivers are really different now, and that is really around being able to cycle to work easily. But also, I in my job, I'm meeting a lot of people quite frequently. Mm -hmm. So my favourites have become the shirt. 
And actually, I wondered post-Starfish what Laurie would, would move towards style-wise. But yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just loving the good old shirt. And so two of my fave purchases recently, um, I must say that that's something I'm really working on is I, I do love the, the wonderful array and there's been a real jump in the amount of them, but the recycled boutiques that we yeah, have. Yeah. And, and really, I'm now able to purchase a wardrobe at a, at a fair cost that still works for me, but yeah, I'm not having to buy new. Yeah. So that's really how I am accessing a lot of you know any new garments I'm purchasing at the moment. And you get the most amazing, amazing fabrics. And it's the fabric. The, yeah. yeah. And that way it's cotton, the still cotton is just so lovely. Once again, because I'm on the bike, it's a really necessary fibre for me to wear and it is easy to wash and carry on. And um, but then too, I've still got some amazing starfish classics, which were all oh, yeah. organic cotton, and they um, this one gets worn and thrashed and washed, and it's still being worn a lot. So how old would this be? Ah, uh, this is um, the Seven Sisters collection. I'm looking at you, maybe 2012. Right. So that's five years old ish, and is worn. It's still really summer, magnificent. summer, yeah. winter, yeah. and yeah. machine washed. Right. Regularly, yeah. yeah. Um, dresses are another fave. So once again, because of the bike, so this is an old starfish number. It's an organic cotton, um, but obviously with the the wide skirt kick, so that I can just throw myself onto the bike. Um, all of these prints were designed by our stylist at the time, Barry Beetham, in conjunction with Greta Menzies. Yeah. Again, so we were working with Greta quite a lot, and this is another fave that I do actually. Give a, so a lot of these dresses have had a lot of wear and actually they're quite simple but for me it's also about another way that I get a bit of kick is by a fun accessory so sometimes I will spend a little bit on a, on a favourite necklace or something because that way you can just keep your faves going but with a bit of a, a new splash. I've got a, um, a starfish dress in a very similar colour to that and it's really sort of 1920s with big pleats down the bottom mm. with a tie on it. Oh, yes, yes. And I love it because it doesn't matter what your weight is. It yep. fits you and accommodates you. You know, you, your weight can fluctuate and it's... I think that was called the lily gown, if I remember rightly, but that's going back into the head a little bit. But yes, yeah. that was a very successful design, that one, in yeah, terms of the, yeah, the wearability. And yet it had that amount that drama that kind of slight avant-garde drama about it as well yeah, yeah yeah so yes um organic cotton and the same this has been going yeah uh for about five years and this gets really caned so i think the interesting thing even for me there is that when we we made our clothes with intent and they really have lasted i don't know if that was any good for our business but right. you know <laughs> But the frocks are still going, and, and I'm really thankful because I, I need them to. Yeah. And be easy to wash, easy to wear, work in a multi-environment. So basically from bike to, to boot, you know, to an event, yeah. that's my life now. And um, they're actually doing that, and that was the intent of the design process that we went really about. Yeah. And unlike that high street stuff where you get the low quality fabrics, Wear them a few times and then they just, you know, they start to perish. It's, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that I, 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 so I went there. I've got one, this little skirt I bought down at Sweet James just Amazing this week color. because of the color. And Sweet James is um, a gorgeous little um, vintage op shop in Newtown. And I love her because she so genuinely loves her clothes and. And I think she bought this one back from the States. And I saw it and I was like, I can just see me on my bike in that <laughs> skirt with you a need, lovely you tan. You don't need reflector. No, you and it's, it's, it's dual purposing <laughs> in the safety, you yeah. know. It was like, people surely can't miss me. But interestingly enough, so I love the cart. Oh, and it's got pockets. It's got mm -hmm. pockets, but the fibre is Oh, I've worn it once and it's already disappointing oh, me. It's See, gorgeous. it's snagged, and actually, it just doesn't feel that nice on the body. So, as much as I love the skirt, oh. you know, it's just amazing the difference between 
a really good quality fibre yeah. and something that wears and something that just kind of doesn't. Yeah. And so already I'm restraining from wearing well, yeah, it's that. Got a couple of catches yeah. In it. yeah, so it's a real shame. But oh, yeah. And not to I'll I'll enjoy it, but the you know, realistically it's has it got any longevity. It hasn't got any longevity. Yeah. Yeah. So this will end up in landfill quicker than say the other garments that are made out of really good quality fabrics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but fabrics are hard for people to negotiate to um, navigate and that was some work that we were trying to put in around education and really making sure that people were aware of what the fabrics were on the outside of the garment. So in our swing tags, I don't think I've got one left even, but you could look at a starfish garment before you knew the price, you actually knew what the fibre was. Right. And so the purpose around that was to, to get people to, to feel it and um, my co-designer at the time, Carlene, and I often did uh, what we called the, the wine taste for fabrics, where we would actually close our eyes and feel fabrics before choosing them for, the, you know, for design, because we could, we could feel that they would, how they would feel on the body and knew that that would lead to a longer lasting garment if people love the feel of it. Yeah, they, it's, oh, they talk about hand feel within the industry, but you don't have people speaking no, about that outside. No, yeah. yeah, and it's a shame because like all things, I guess, you know, a, a good quality meal, how would we describe that? How, you know, how is an ordinary, uh, I want to say eater, what's the consumer word for, you know, but an enjoyer of food? How do we, how do we rate that? But the same with clothing. So yeah, and I noticed my daughter's one in particular who really understands good fabric next to her skin already. She couldn't articulate what it is, yeah. but she can feel it. And if it doesn't feel nice, it doesn't, she can't, she oh, just doesn't wear you. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just think it's something she must have, you know, some really people tactile. must have tactile. Yeah. yeah. So your own, um, so your purchasing habits yourself, so your mm. vintage, your more high quality, low volume, or do you mix it all up? What do you... As in when I'm buying? Yeah. Yeah, um, I must say that, yes, I, I haven't been able to afford, probably, to um, splash out and support some of our local designers, but I would really, I'm gearing up for that. <laughs> um, and I really do think that still, you know, buying local is a really important part of this, this situation that we're in. Because e even as a business, although local, local designers may not get it right all the time, you are supporting an industry which can cater to demand. But when we're supporting massive chains, what are we supporting financially there? Yeah. So I would be encouraging our local designers where we can have a dialogue you know, for them with good fabrics. Um, but then also, yes, for me, I'm definitely um, mm -hmm. actually happily getting what I need out of the many uh, recycle boutiques that we have going on. And um, my faves would be Ziggurat, Hunters and Collectors, and I'm really loving Sweet James and Newtown. So oh. between them, there's not really much need to go anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't been to Sweet James. I must go and check it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. She's got an amazing eye and a really um, quite a quirky taste. So she's very selective with what she pops in there. Yeah. But she's got some great colours and some great... Uh, she's good on the vintage 80s and 90s. Oh, nice. Yeah. Where we naturally belong. Yeah. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> hey, so um, in terms of the broader industry itself, what, what are you most concerned about? It? Oh, upcycling t-shirts. That's a good way to go. So we've just run a campaign um, for Vote Laurie Foon. And, um, but what we've done is gone to op shops and got secondhand t shirts. So there is a print on there. So there's there a print on there and it's we've reversed them out. Line or something. Yeah. Yep, to make campaign t shirts. They look great, don't they? Thank and then you, you just have their little exposed seam. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No one minds. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the biggest concern within the industry for you at the moment? Um, oh, it's definitely the access to the cheap turnover garments, the, the non-traceability, who's making them, how are they being made, in what conditions, and then definitely the, the fibre quality and actually where that's coming from and the impact that that's having on the planet. Yeah.
just because of the cons because it's lower quality, the consumption rate and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and something that you feel optimistic about. In the fashion industry, I've got to say, um, I think you know me as a really optimistic person, but in the fashion industry, I'm really struggling. <laughs> it oh, feels really? like the gap is deep and that the awareness is there and starting to come up, but actually how to practice that, it's not so easy as just taking public transport or choosing to ride a bike or eating fair trade food or, you know, it seems to be quite a, quite a diverse range of options that people, like you said, have to navigate. And so that's, yeah, I think the question would be, how do we simplify, how do we educate and how do we make it easy to make good decisions? Mm. Yeah, education is a major component mm. to this note. One thing I am optimistic about is the, the, the youth, the schools seem to be really understanding and the teachers are having a great um, impact on 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 what choices the children are making. So I've seen plays about Rana Plaza. Um, my daughter's very aware of where where things are coming from, and so the the social impact is really important to her. But then I love seeing things like um, Overso Fashion Awards really going into schools and really encouraging creativity around the reuse of fabrics, and I find that really exciting. Yeah. I think you're really optimistic about mm. that. And that's growing every year. It's yeah. really great. Also, oh. apps like Conscious Consumers and, and Good On You are really good just to start supporting people that are really putting themselves forward as doing the right thing there too. Great. Brilliant. Hey, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you to the... Thank you. Thank to you. for watching. Thank yeah. you. And if you're in the Southern Ward... <laughs> <laughs> Boat Lorry. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>